Hey guys, I'm Davin Ultron. Welcome back to another Dying Light 2 video. Today we're going to be talking about and looking at the new raid mission that was added in the last update. This is a new mission you can find by Jay, our friendly arms dealer. And on top of this new mission, there's also some new rewards and you can unlock these through new ranks. For those of you who want to try to get through the ranks and get some tokens and level up, I have a video, a guide on how to do that. So make sure to check that out before watching this one. Now a little bit about this mission. This mission involves you going to a building, going through some floors, and then getting to the rooftop where there's an airdrop. Now through playing this, there are about maybe four floors. There's the ground floor, which doesn't really count. You just go through a couple of zombies and get into an elevator to get to the main first floor. Now this first main floor will give you your first modifier. Now as you can see, there are some reward modifiers, and then there are the risk modifiers. Pretty self-explanatory, the reward one will make it very easy for you to get through the floor and the risk one will make it a little more difficult. In my experience there are about two floors and this could change on, you know, depending on how you're playing or your luck. What I found is that there's only four floors whenever I play. There's the main ground floor, the two main floors where the modifiers will affect you. And then finally the roof where I almost always find a new modifier. But the unique thing about this new mission is that each floor can be different. You can be doing different things, face different bosses. You know, it could be a GRE aberration. It could even be a volatile tyrant, which, you know, if you're ranked very high, it'll not be too bad. But if you're new, then you're going to be in a whole world of pain. Now, these two floors, these are the fun ones. These are the ones we have to fight through corridors and through crowded spaces and killing infected just to get to the other floor. But then when you get to the top floor, the roof, this one I honestly think is a bit lazy. I mean, you get to an airdrop, you pretty much have to guard it for five minutes, which I think is a lot of time if you're doing it on solo. I feel like it should be less if you're on solo, but that's just me. And then afterwards, you get some rewards. You get some equipment, some materials and whatnot. And it's quite a lot, actually. I mean, the 400 scrap, I think, is worth it. But when playing this mission, I found myself using the UV bars a lot. So it barely kind of covers it and gives you a little profit. Now, as for the mission, if you do the weekly bounties, you'll actually get a huge bonus of 2,000 RP or XP, whatever it's called. And if you're on console, of course, you can do the trick and fast forward a week and restart it and do it again and again. So that every time you do it, you'll get that 2,000. Now, on this run, it took me about 11 and a half minutes to complete. You can probably do this quicker or it could probably take you a lot longer because there is one mission on the floor where you have to survive for like I think it was three minutes or five minutes I don't really remember it was on a live stream but either way it could depend on what you get now after completing the mission you do get a chest and in my opinion it's not all that great there's a chance of an exotic weapon but I've only got a nocturnal weapon so far a throwable which could be a UV bar or throwing knives whatever and some ammo so it's not all that worth it in my opinion but if you don't have exotic weapons or don't have much of a chance to get them then yeah this could be useful for you but but for most players i don't think this would be worth it to actually get now moving on to the new rewards the new items you can buy from jay i'm not really going in any type of order the first one will be the judgment day pk axe now from the name of it it's a pk axe a one-handed axe and the good thing about this is that it's got two mod slots and including a accessory to add with it it's a pretty good weapon, it's well made, looks fun to use. It's not the best, but it is a nice change of pace for once. Now move on to my favorite part of the update is this new shotgun. The Spitfire shotgun. This one has more ammo than the golden shotgun. It's got eight instead of six. And from the name of it, it shoots fire. Now I don't know if it's because of me, but I feel like it has a more spread and somehow deals more damage. I've tested this out in the missions and honestly this thing is amazing. Like doing the toxic work environment is just so much easier with a shotgun. Now our next reward is a throwable for once. It's a shock knife. And what this knife does is that whenever you throw it at someone it electrifies them as well as anybody else around them. But honestly I don't really see this working out so much whenever I use it but you know if it works as intended then it's pretty well made. It's great for crowds or for whenever you want to stun someone and get a good hit in but I'd probably still stick with this saw blade. Next up, we have the Goliath, which is a long-handed mace. It's like the Judgment Day PK Axe. It's got the PK logo and the design, and it's also got two mod slots. Nothing really special, just another PK designed weapon, which to be honest, you don't really see many of nowadays. 
Now, next up is a weapon that was wanted since day one, or actually since the first time they released the trailer, and it is the Scorpio. This weapon was shown in the trailer, and a lot of people wanted it, but we never saw it until an event. And in that event, you were able to get this weapon, but a lot of people missed it, so I'm guessing they brought this back. You can now purchase this. This weapon deals a lot of damage, it's heavy, and applies some elemental stuff, but the thing that makes this special is the fact that it can be flipped and used to shoot a harpoon. In other words, becoming a melee weapon and a ranged weapon all in one. Now last on the list we have the Reaper, which is a two-handed axe. And I really like two-handed axes because you can swing them and hit your enemies that are a bit farther away from you. So you can avoid being grabbed and manage to hit them. It's also great for taking out multiple enemies in one swing, and it's honestly just badass to use. I mean, it's a freaking Grim Reaper scythe. But anyways, that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to leave me a like, leave a comment down below what else you want to see next, and if you find yourself coming back to my channel, why not subscribe? You're coming back anyways. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.